Now, if you're like me, you probably spend a lot of time behind your computer. And I would consider myself somewhat of a productivity geek. And in this video, I will share all the apps I use on a daily basis to make my work more enjoyable and efficient. Now, I typically start my days within Obsidian with some journaling. Now, Obsidian really is an awesome note-taking app and honestly, I could talk hours about it. Let's say, for example, you're trying to learn data science and you're trying to figure out what a neural network is. You're looking online, you find an explanation that you want to take a note of. Now, this is what I would then do. I would copy the source, go into Obsidian, hit Command N to create a new file, fill in the title, hit Enter, hit Command P, Enter, Note Template, Paste. And within a matter of seconds, I created a new note from a template all using my keyboard and I can easily reference the source here and then copy for example this explanation go back and paste it now save it and it will do some auto formatting of the file and it will also add some metadata for example date created and date modified now within notes you can also link to other notes so for example this note over here about the number of hidden layers and notes in a neural network and by clicking on this link you can now go to the other note so it links them together similar to how your brain stores information and one of the cool things about obsidian is that you can have a look at all your notes and how they are connected so this is my second brain basically over here another very cool feature of obsidian is the data view plugin which lets you query results based on certain tags and metadata so for example these are all my book notes that i have in obsidian now in the final game changer for me about obsidian is that since these files are stored in plain markdown you can see it's a markdown file it's basically code and because it's code you can push it to github so yes you can have a version control of your second brain and all your notes. And look how easy this is using the GitHub plugin. I can hit Command P, then I can do a commit. So 82 files committed, then Command P push. And you can see that 28 seconds ago, we've updated this repository. So in this way, you have full control over your own notes. And then onto other essentials, which are email and calendar. Now for this, I use Microsoft Outlook and now I have all my personal stuff within Google. So Gmail and Google Calendar. But some of the clients I work with have uh, Microsoft Outlook accounts and I can't merge that into Google. So I found that Microsoft Outlook is a convenient app to basically import all the email accounts that you have and also all the calendar accounts that you have into one place. Now, one quick little trick that I like to do since I work fully remote and I often forget when I have my meetings when I'm coding because I'm so into the process is I set my default reminder for my calendar at five minutes. And I also have it set so that I get a notification on my Apple Watch, but you can also do this on just uh, your computer, for example. And when I'm into a coding session and a meeting is about to start, I will get a notification on my watch and that gives me just enough time for a quick toilet break or a coffee, for example, before the meeting is about to start. And then on to my absolute favorite app, Todoist. And this is a task manager app and I use this to basically organize my whole life. So my calendar is mainly just for meetings that I have with people, but all the tasks that I have to do in a month, in a week, in a day, I plan that within Todoist. Now, one of the things I love most about Todoist is that you can define your tasks using keyboard shortcuts and natural language. So for example, while I'm recording this video, I might think of another task that I have to do later. For example, editing this video. So what I can do is I can hit shift spacebar, then type in my task, then I can give it a priority say p1 which is the highest priority then i can specify a date so i can say i want to do this today and i can even assign a project for now let's just store it in my inbox and now you can see that i've just created a new task edit this video with due date today another very powerful feature is that you can use recurring dates for tasks so for example if i remove this video and create a new task edit video and then specify every thursday it will create a task for me that is due every thursday and to do is has many more awesome features and i basically use it to plan my whole life now, another essential that I can't live without is Spotify. So while I'm working, while I'm coding, I always like to listen to some music. I have a focus folder where I have a lot of playlists that I like to listen to. I also sometimes listen to some noise. So either brown noise, pink noise, or some binaural beats. That also helps with focus. And one awesome tip for Spotify that I only just found out recently is that you can create folders and then store playlists in there. So I'm not sure if you can do this on mobile, but if you're on desktop, if you go to the sidebar and then right click somewhere, you can create a folder and you can just drag and drop playlist into there. So as I just showed, this is my focus folder where I have a lot of playlists. And then when I'm working I just pick a playlist from here and then onto storage. So I use drop 
Dropbox to store all my files. And I basically make sure that I sync all my folders to my MacBook. So I'm always working within folders that are synced to a cloud. So I have nothing locally stored on my MacBook. So whenever something happens to my Mac, it gets stolen or it breaks, for example, I don't have to worry about losing any of my files. And if you don't already work like this, I highly recommend looking into one of the cloud storage platforms. So you can also use Google or Microsoft or, or Dropbox and just pay a little bit extra to get the one terabyte of storage. So you never have to worry about your files anymore. Then onto Visual Studio Code. And this is basically where I spend most of my time since I'm a data scientist. So this is the program I use to code. I really like it. It's free and it's highly customizable. So yeah, it's an awesome IDE. Then for communication, I used Microsoft Teams and Slack, depending on which client I'm working with. I think Microsoft Teams is awesome for video calls, but the chat functions really suck. And Slack is just awesome for chats. And then another cool app, which is particularly useful when you're working as a freelancer, and that is Toggle. It's a time tracking app and it does that really well. So it also has a desktop version where you can easily specify what you're working on and then assign it to a project and start tracking. And then another game changer, and that is One Password. And this is not just a password app, but it does much more. And I switched to this beginning of this year. And before that, I just had all my passwords stored in Google Chrome. But then I switched to One Password and it has made things so much easier. So if you don't already use a password manager, I would highly recommend recommend checking out 1Password. What's cool about 1Password is that you can store much more than just passwords. So you basically any secure information that you want to store somewhere safe, you can put into 1Password. So you can also store API credentials, crypto wallets, your passport, servers, stuff like that. So basically anything that you would normally, for example, create a note for in your note taking app that you want to store for later and it's somewhat private information, you can use 1Password to store it. And another cool app which I begin to use more and more often is Fix Figma and use this to create mind maps or explain things in my videos. And I even use it for my clients sometimes to explain certain parts of a project, for example. Now, another cool app that is always running in the background is Flux. And what this does, it makes the color of your computer display adapt to the time of the day. So warm in the evening and like sunlight during the day. I know that macOS has a built-in feature like this already, but Flux is much more powerful in my opinion. And then finally, a few Mac specific apps that are really awesome and I can't live without. And the first one is Alfred. This is basically Spotlight on steroids. You can search files, open apps, uh, and even with workflows, you can do much more. One of the cool things about Alfred is that it has a connection with 1Password. So you can easily search for your passwords or any other secure information. So you can just type 1P and then do a search. And I also love how you can preview files from Alfred. So this is something I use very often is for example, when I'm coding and I'm looking for a certain piece of code that I know that I've saved somewhere. What I can then do is I can search for this file. So in this example, I have a file pandas snippets and that is a Python file where I store snippets of code related to the pandas library that I use very often and that I want to get back to. So then when I'm looking for a certain piece of code, I type pandasnippets.py and then I select the file and I can press shift and this will open up the file in a preview window and I can scroll through it and then copy exactly what I need and go back to my code editor to paste it in. So yeah, awesome app. And if you're on a Mac and you don't already use Alfred, I would highly recommend checking it out. And then some final miscellaneous app that just make working on a Mac a better experience in my opinion. First one is Magnet. This lets you snap windows to a certain part of the screen, just like in Windows. So you could do left, right, full screen, all with keyboard shortcuts. Then Bartender, which is a neat little app that hides all the icons from your menu bar. So as you can see, the menu bar is nice and clean over here. But then when I hover my mouse over there, you can see all the apps that are uh, in the menu bar and running. So that just keeps things nice and clean, but they're still there whenever you need them. And then finally, Alt Tab. So I've been a Windows user for basically my whole life. And earlier this year, I fully switched to Mac OS and I love it. I don't think I could go back anymore, but there were some things about the Mac operating system that annoyed me and switching between applications was one of them. Using Alt Tab on a Windows is just so natural and convenient and on Mac switching between applications with Command Tab just always annoyed me. Some hidden apps won't show up, stuff like that. It's just annoying. Alt Tab fixes that and creates a similar experience like on Windows. All right, and that concludes this video. Let me know in the comments what apps you can't live without because I'm always looking for new ways to improve my workflow and productivity. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one.